dare to dream with me, my friends, or at least dare to think on this particular occasion. Those of you that saw my last Factories video, Failing Factories, will have seen that I made what I what I thought was a pretty damn look good looking factory with lots of cool little decorations and things that kind of travel around it and stuff. But um, it wasn't particularly well functioning, as you may well remember. And so it got me kind of thinking just how useful are factories not not in terms of making things look good because they really do make things look good the factories look amazing not in terms of kind of cool things because there's tons of cool things the firework maker the the the, the um, launcher the switches that uh, you can shoot to turn on and off um, the the logic switches they, there's awesome stuff there but just in terms of the processing and the what we can build is there anything really useful in there for those players that just like to play the game and kind of go right how can I make my character better how can I make my um, uh, how can I make myself kind of more powerful or, or things like that? So that's what this special episode of a kind of build it is going to be about. Is, is it, if you're just looking for useful machines, what should you build? Greetings and welcome to Build It, the Useful Factory Edition. Now let's just get this out of the way straight away. Contraptions isn't really nearly as useful as it looks, sadly. Um, it's really aesthetically cool. It's really fun. There are awesome things that you can build. Um, the, 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 the warehouse pieces, and we can make some brilliant designs, all the stuff with the rolling stuff, the scaffolding. You know, if you're into the kind of like the look of your, um, settlements then there is so much to do here and you know the act of the way these kind of uh, conveyor belts are kind of animated the way they kind of carry things around uh, there's all sorts of really cool aesthetic looks but in terms of practical uses for creating things in your factories unfortunately precious little is actually um, available the first thing I would suggest that you do is you head over to either the uh, Bethesda uh, mods website or the Nexus and you grab this manufacturing extended by uh, Kentington. Basically every mod person who makes videos has covered it because it, it's just it's just that good. It adds on a ton of stuff which the original DLC um, probably kind of should have had really and uh, it fits right in. You Once, once you kind of add it in you won't really kind of notice that it's there because it just kind of feels part of what should have been there already. Um, obviously if you do like it then come over and endorse it and track it. Oops I hadn't, I'd forgotten to do that myself. Um, but um, you've got to grab that and that's available for Xbox and it's already up there for PS4 even though PS4 uh, mods aren't available yet so um, there really is no reason not to have that one. Um, and I'll, I'll cover cover a couple of those in a minute. So basically, I'm, I'm going to assume you have manufacturing extended in what I'm about to show you here um, today. Now, um, those of you who watched my video the other day, I made a, what I think is a really good looking factory that didn't work. Um, thanks to some of your wonderful comments, I have kind of fixed it using manufacturing extended. It isn't exactly as I'd hoped, but it does work. Um, so, for example, um, this is a component extractor, which is from Manufacturing Extended. And what this is doing is it's sucking stuff out of my workshop, which is pretty awesome, because the workshop is all the way over there, back in that little shed over there. And this is automatically kind of pulling out um, kind of components from it based on what um, items um, I put in. So if I just grab myself um, some aluminium, put it in my inventory, and I put the aluminium in here... Um, it will automatically start pulling out any aluminium that I have in my um, inventory back there, which is really, really good until I take it out again. But wait a minute, you're, you're kind of saying to me, so where, where's the, the useful uses? Okay, so this is what I kind of came up with in terms of a, a useful factory kind of processor to try and reduce the amount of time it takes you to actually make things. What we've got is a component extractor, which takes things out of the workshop. Then we've got um, a plant, whatever it is that you particularly want. And then we've got a storage um, for whatever it is that we're making. So this is ammunition. And what we could do here, and this does work, I've tested it, we could take every one of every single um, um, element and put it into here and it'll just start pulling everything out of the workshop there. But if your workshops are as full as mine, it's gonna take a huge amount of time to fill it in. So what we can do is we can give it a little bit of a hand um, by coming over to here. We can come over to the, uh, the computer and we can work out roughly what it is um, that the ammunition or whatever it is, the clothing one, the weapons one, um, roughly needs. And just for argument's sake, we can see that the uh, 
uh, the, the ammo place basically requires lead fertilizer. And I know because I've looked at some of the others that it also requires uh, lead fertilizer, steel, and plastic. And I think that's all of them. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna go back into here and I'll get rid of the aluminium and I'm just gonna grab fertilizer and I'm gonna grab uh, lead, which was the other one. And I'm gonna put that into my um, component extractor, fertilizer and lead. And then so the component extractor is then automatically I'm gonna start pulling um, fertilizer and lead out of my workshop. And here it comes. Now it's alphabetical. So it's gonna pull out all of the fertilizer before it pulls out any lead. But you can see it's doing it pretty quick. Um, so it's, so I can now wander off, carry on building something, develop something else, go for a sleep or whatever I want to do. I'm not sure sleeping works, but you know, in principle I can go off and do something else. And this machine is slowly filling up um, well, fertilizer and then it'll get to the lead. And once it does so, this thing will start kicking off and um, soon we'll be able to see some stuff over here as I look at some suspicious blood um, on the uh, on the floor there. And uh, what the reason why this works so well is because at any point we can put the ingredients um, back into the workshop in preparation for something else. So you can see this is nicely kind of working away here and hopefully very, very soon we'll see our first 10 millimeter rounds. Hello, 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 there you are. Now, the clever bit here, or the bit I'm particularly pleased with is actually around the other side. Because, as you can see, the machine now is filling up and up with stuff. But suppose now I've made enough 10 millimeter rounds, and actually, somewhere over here, I've got another setup of these three things, and I'd like to make some weapons or some power armor or something. I've wired up a switch. The uh, ammunition plant has just turned itself off, but thanks to the wonderful uh, little gate I've got here, it's just turned on this vacuum hopper, which was sitting behind, which is now sucking everything out of the ammunition plant. And thanks to Manufacturing Extended, we've got a conveyor workshop storage, which is now putting all of the spare stuff or any stuff that shouldn't be there is now going back into um, the original storage ready to be sucked out for another machine. And the reason why I feel that this is a useful way of doing it is because it allows me to have machines anywhere in the um, that particular settlement. Um, and as long as I've got kind of, you know, using any kind of conveyor belt setup, as long as I've got somewhere this kind of setup, um, it will work in that I've got a, a vacuum hopper uh, which is on a different power line, a different kind of power ring um, to these machines. And whenever we turn this on, then it's gonna be putting stuff back into the workshop. And whenever I flick the switch and go the other way, it's gonna be turning this stuff on and taking stuff out of um, the, the workshop. Um, to make this work, and uh, it's quite it's quite a simple principle. If you've got any questions about it, do of course ask me in the um, in the comment section. I'm happy to talk about it more. But this, if you saw my other video with the factory, this actually would have worked um, better than what I had before. So I'll just flip this back the other way because that'll then slowly start filling back up the workshop, and I've got my 10 millimeter rounds waiting for me there. Here's one that unfortunately doesn't work. This is one I really wanted to work, but it doesn't. This is the explosives mill, and you can use it to make explosives. Duh. But you can already make explosives with a chemistry station, and the chemistry station version, unfortunately, is just superior to the explosives mill version. I could take the explosives mill, put it in here, and do the same system here, pumping things into it, making the explosives, yada, 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 and it would all look very, very cool. But actually, I can just do it quickly, more quickly, using the chemistry station. It's quicker, and it's actually better because right now I can make this Molotov cocktail and if I do it, my character, then it actually uses any of the goods and um, uh, scrap parts um, from any settlement I have that's connected by a supply line. Whereas if I use just the factory, I only use what's actually in this settlement or that's what's over in that workshop. And I can prove this because look, I've got adhesive 44 here available for me to make some Molotov cocktails. I can't do these just because I haven't got the requirements, not because I don't have the ingredients. In fact, if you look down, you can see I actually do have the ingredients, but I don't have them here. So that said, um, I'll just check there, adhesive 44, but if I was to set something up very, very carefully with my factory to make it work, it would only have access to the adhesive which is currently in this settlement, which is uh, actually 12. Or in actually many cases, it might even be none, you know, depending on what, what particular ingredient I'm looking for. So the explosive one is a really nice idea, but it, it's not as good as doing it yourself manually. It, it would just be longer and it would be irritating. But these two, are my favorite too. They are both from Manufacturing Extended and they do something which actually can't be done already. They are the Auto Butcher 
and the robot disassembler. They are disgusting and they are beautiful. Here is a rabid mole rat. I have shot it earlier and I shall pick it up and I shall place it delicately upon the conveyor belt. Now what this allows us to do, which we actually couldn't do before the machines came along, is chop up living creatures into their component parts. Um, and as you can see, I've done this once before already, because um, basically what's gonna come out of here is first of all, the things that were inside, so the mole wrap meat and the mole leathers, and I, I could have had them already, so, so no change there. But because we're chopping up the whole body, we're also getting extra mole wrap meat. We're also getting fertilizer from the, uh, the, <clears throat> the poo. We're also getting some bone, which is useful for those kind of constructions. Um, and so now this machine from Manufacturing Extended is giving us new functionality. And I think that's the, the real shame about the work, the workshop is that it's beautiful, it's fun. It gives us precious little stuff to do that we couldn't really do before. Because even that, um, as the gunner goes in, even that lovely ammo machine over there, we couldn't craft ammo before without mods, but it's actually cheaper and easier to just buy it because um, you need lead to make ammo. And the only real place to get lead around the place is from shipments. And you can actually just buy the ammo for more or less the same price or kind of cheaper. As our little human comes out, you can see um, what's really nice is it actually saves all of the stuff that was inside there. So the outfit it was wearing is still here. The hat was still here. The ammo it was carrying was still here. And now we have the human meat as well, which is perfect for a uh, kind of cannibal character, which will be happening on my perma role plays. Um, and all of the bones and the rib cage and the pelvis, it's, it, it's disgusting. But it's awesome at the same time, because like I said, this is new functionality. We can do stuff with this. I can sell this. I can chop up all the stuff. Um, and by the way, of course, I could put here, instead of this um, beautiful um, bathtub, I could put a storage unit, which all of this stuff would go into, and it'd be far easier to pick up. But I wanted to see the gore. Um, and the, uh, the robot one uh, basically does the same thing, but it does it with robots. So I spin this little dude in the, in the air. Whee! <laughs> this is your first little, last little trip, my friend. Uh, oh. And there goes the terrible aim. Try that one again. In he goes. Our swarm goes in, disappears as it hits the detector. The robot disassembler will do the similar thing and chop it up. Anything that's inside the robot will come out and with some extras as well. Um, so these are two fantastic machines that really you've just got to have. Um, especially in a settlement that keeps getting attacked, especially if you're fed up of having like bodies lying around your settlement as well. Um, you can't pick up skeletons in the game. Um, so sadly, they won't be able to go in, but the any kind of like living or recently living um, material um, will happily go in here. As you can see, um, lovely robotics and um, bits and bobs come out. One last thing for you, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry to say this is actually one last thing because it, it really isn't all that useful is, is the thing. Um, oh, there was a really cool one over here called the Recycler, which again comes from... Uh, the extended version, uh, which breaks down objects into components, which is actually very useful for kind of more extended um, kind of factories. But again, by itself, it doesn't necessarily do kind of a lot, but that one's handy as well. Um, th there's a lot of fun to be had in this. There is a lot of fun to be had. It's just not, if you're a character that's kind of power playing and you're kind of saying, right, so what really makes a difference? The answer is not a lot, really. So this is a builder. And uh, the builder basically allows you to make some silly toys, which isn't really all that exciting, doesn't really do a heck of a lot, but there is a nice way of making money here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the fertilizer and lead out of my component extractor, and instead I'm going to put in some steel, because steel is a very, 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 very common um, component that you'll find all over the place. So when I turn this on, loads of steel is gonna start um, going in. Remember that machine was on, so I'm going to flip this switch. This one should turn back on, and yep, there we are. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell this little machine, my builder, to create Voltec lunch boxes. Now there are lots of ways of making money in the game, but this is a, another another one to look at. You can use purified water, you can use vegetables, yada yada yada. This uses three steel to create a vault tech lunchbox. So my automated system here is already happily taking lots and lots of steel out of my uh, workshop, and out come the little um, work what, what, uh, lunchboxes as they go um, past, and they'll be stacking up in here, and one at a time. I'll just scoop one up. Now the reason why this one is particularly good is because its value is 10. Now the steel has a value of uh, one, so 
three steel, one, 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 but the lunchbox itself has a value of 10. So that's actually three times the value of the items um, that I'm putting into it, which is pretty good. And also steel is a very common component as well. Now you can actually set up something very similar with the clothing one, the auto loom, and you can create suits. And if you use manufacturing extended, you can do it with the, uh, uh, the faction costumes as well, but most of them include um, adhesive or they require adhesive as well as other things and because adhesive requires you to either find it or it requires you to buy shipments of it or it requires you to grow it with potatoes it's a lot more complex and actually at the end of the day you might not be making a profit here you definitely 100% will be making a profit out of these lunch boxes which is another cool way of make, making money without perhaps necessarily going into lots of factories and things like that and that's it. Everything else I think with factories is more or less for kind of funsies, but if you want some practical uses out of it, make lunch boxes to make yourself money, uh, make yourself a nice little thing using these, these hoppers and the workshop things when you do want to make something, and uh, don't bother with the explosives, sadly, and chop up your dead. Chop up your dead. Other possible uses of this, less useful but possible uses, could be you could use one of the clothing machines to make yourself loads of one particular type of clothing so you could dress your settlements up to look a certain way. Again, that's kind of aesthetic that you could put all of the farmers in farmer's gear, you could put all of the uh, the guards in kind of guard gear with armor and things like that. Uh, other practical uses with the armor and the power armor one, uh, you can make your companions proper power armor and armor, and again, you can kind of make them on a more mass basis. But I again, don't feel they're that useful because for argument's sake, to make the power armor ones, you need loads of components, you need to be at a certain level, you need to have unlocked certain perks, and the chances are by the time you've got those perks, those components, and you're ready to make the power armor, you could have found the power armor, you know, just kind of going around and dealing dealing with the, those kind of problems. And the same goes for most of the kind of faction clothing as well. Like, yes, I can craft faction clothing, but by the time I actually am able to craft the faction clothing, I probably could have met that faction and just got the clothing. Um, it's more useful if, say, for example, you want to make an entire um, settlement of people all wearing institute clothing or something like that, then yes, there's a use. But again, it's not a, a doesn't give you any advantage. It looks cool. It's all aesthetic. Um, so there you go. I feel like I'm being a bit gloomy here, but I'm not. I'm, I'm trying to say it's not particularly useful, but here's a few things that are. Make yourself some money, make yourself and chop up bodies and have a bit of fun with it, really. Just don't expect too much and you should be fine. I hope you found this useful. Um, I will be turning, I will, what I will do is I will make another video in uh, a week or so showing how we can make some really nice designs around these um, chopping up ones and uh, maybe some of the other bits and bobs. And if you'd like to see that, please give the video a like or let me know in the uh, comments. Or if you've had any cool ideas about how to kind of de decorate these, then do let me know in the comments section as well, or maybe link me to a picture and I'd love to see what you come up with. I hope you found this useful and it appealed to your intellect and I will see you guys really soon. You have been fantastic. Take care. Bye-bye.